Hey guys, so one of the most common questions I get in regards to action tiles is which tablet should I use? So if you're anything like me and are on a budget, you are looking for something affordable, and one of the most affordable tablets out there are the Amazon Fire tablets. While those do work great for action tiles, there's some issues that many people come across, the main one being the lock screen issue. You just can't get past the lock screen using the Fire OS that's built into the tablet. As you may have seen in a previous video, we use screen savers instead of using the lock screen at all. We bypass that completely. But if you want to have that screen off and use the motion detection settings in fully kiosk browser, for example, and turn the screen on as you walk past, you just can't do that unless you're using Android OS. So in my search for the cheapest 10 inch tablet that will work with action tiles, I came across the GY103. It's right here. I found it on banggood.com and the kind folks over there sent it out for me to check out and review. And I will of course have a link down below if we find that this does work well with action tiles. So let's check it out. What's up guys, it's Drew from Taylor Tech and on this channel we do smart home tech reviews, installations, and DIY guides. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any time, check out the video description for show notes and product links for everything mentioned in this video. Now before we go any further, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Action Tiles. So I've had this for about a week now and I do want to mention right off the bat that the performance isn't perfect when it comes to Action Tiles. Now, this is not Action Tile's fault in any way, shape, or form. It all has to do with the CPU and the RAM and the processing power of the tablet itself. As you probably know, if you go on a computer or a high-end tablet or your phone probably, Action Tiles is really snappy if you're using that in fully kiosk browser or a different browser, period. Action Tiles is usually very snappy and very responsive. Now, if you notice any lags or anything like that when using this tablet, it's not Action Tiles' fault that's the fault of the cheap tablet itself. But in saying that, this does work surprisingly well with action tiles. How many times have I said action tiles so far? So let's go over the advertised specs real quick. It's got a 1.3 gigahertz quad core CPU, which is, eh, should be good enough. It's got one gig of DDR3 memory, 16 gigabyte internal storage, which is good for this case, shouldn't be an issue. It's got a 10.1 inch IPS display. Now one of the not so good parts is the resolution. It comes in at 1280 by 800. Now for a seven inch screen, that's not an issue at all. It all comes down to the pixels per inch or the pixel density. Now when I saw this spec, I almost didn't order it at all, but I thought I'd give it a shot and just see how it looks. And if you're eight inches or closer to the screen, you can definitely see that screen door effect that a low resolution display has. But if you're gonna mount this on a wall or maybe prop it up somewhere to use for action tiles, chances are you're gonna be looking at it from a distance most of the time. So at a further distance, it's actually not as big of an issue as I thought it would be. Now let's look at some of the pros of the tablet. The main one being it's Android. You just can't get that with the Fire tablets. It's locked into the Fire OS that Amazon provides. The other one being that it's cheap. Right now, I believe it is $60 on Banggood. I'll have the current price right here with free shipping from the Canada warehouse, I believe. Another one being that it's a full 10 inch screen. As you can see here, we're right at 10 inches, so no fake 10 inch screen, it is actually 10 inches. And it's got that front facing camera that we need for that motion detection if we're using fully kiosk browser. So let's jump into the tablet itself. If you do pick one of these up, there are a few things that you definitely wanna do. Uh, the, the first one being the haptic feedback. When you type on the keyboard, or toggle anything in action tiles, for example, or anything else, you get a terrible vibrating haptic feedback, and you definitely wanna turn that off you go to language and input, uh, you can go to Android keyboard and preferences and toggle this vibrate on key press off. And that really makes a big difference. It just feels super cheap when it does that. Now, when you do hold it in your hand, you will notice that the build quality is not great. Um, but like, it's, like I keep saying, this is probably gonna be mounted on a wall somewhere. So you're not even going to be holding it. On the right hand side, you have the power button and the volume controls. And on the top, actually, you have the micro USB charger. The bottom has the speakers. The first thing I did when I got this was actually go ahead and install the Nova launcher. So it's got the, uh, 
the built-in launcher for this skin was just terrible. So I went ahead and installed Nova Launcher, so it's a little bit better. So I will go ahead and open up Fully Kiosk Browser. Let me go ahead and close everything else out so we don't have any issues when it comes to that. And I, will, I have my hallway panel open right now, which has some media tiles, it's got other things, it's got still images, just to kind of give it a good test here. And I'm also gonna compare it side by side to my phone, which is the most powerful Android device I have actually. So just so you can see how these cameras that I have here compare to something like a more powerful Android device. I've seen a lot of people using these mounts that can be found on Amazon that this tablet can just slide right into. And I think I'm gonna go with that. This may be in the hallway, or if I do see that this does work quite well, I might put it in the kitchen and replace the Fire 7 I have in there. Okay, so I've got my phone, which is a Pixel 2 XL here, next to the tablet with the same panel up. I've got both at full 100% brightness. And as you can see, this one just is not quite up to par with the phone here. But uh, like I said, it'll work probably fine in a dimmer area. But uh, just so you can see the difference in the pixel density and the smoothness of it, um, you may or may not be able to see the screen door effect with the camera. I do have it zoomed in pretty much as far as it will go to be able to see both of them. But where, from where I'm standing, I'm about, I don't know, 10 inches away and it really doesn't look too bad. I mean, obviously my phone looks much better because it's got the 1440p resolution and it looks super good. But from afar, I really don't think it would make too much of a difference. This is a budget device. I do have to stress that. So something like the iPad Pro or a higher end Android, maybe a Samsung Tab S or something like that would obviously look a lot better. But uh, for a budget, this would probably work okay. But as I kind of scroll back back and forth through here, you can kind of see the choppiness of the tablet versus the smoothness of the phone. These are both running on fully kiosk browser, by the way. And uh, it does work, it does scroll pretty decent, but you know, it's a little choppy. If we do go ahead and look at one of the cameras here, I'll put them, bring them both up full screen. So there was a car that just drove past there, and if you noticed on both devices, it had pretty much the same frame rate of the car going past. Now I'm running these cameras through Blue Iris, and it is uh, streaming from my server to these tablets here. And I have the frame rate set to 15 frames per second, I believe, when streaming. So it's not gonna be the full frame rate of the camera, but just as an example there, you saw that my high-end phone and the tablet both came in at the same frame rate. If we look at the front yard camera, there's usually a lot more traffic there. So let's see if we can see a, there's one right there. So pretty much the same, same frame rate with this example as well. So when it comes to media tiles, you shouldn't see an issue at all, other than the resolution, of course, as far as streaming. So the next thing I'm gonna compare is the responsiveness of the device. If I go ahead and toggle it on this screen, how quickly it turns off on this one. Now, I'm not just going to turn a device off and see how quickly it turns off here. I'm going to actually turn off this device, which is, it looks weird on this screen, but if you can see here, I've got these three here. It's basically my work schedule. If I turn one of them off, or if I turn one of them on, the other ones turn off. That's just a separate automation. But we can see the difference on speed from the phone to the tablet. So if I turn on Andrew is off, it will turn off Andrew's working days here and here. And let's see if it does it at the same exact time. Yeah, pretty much the same. I couldn't tell a difference there. So as far as responsiveness, that's good. Like we saw the media tiles look good. You may or may not be able to see, but at the bottom corner here, we can actually see the timestamp. It's ticking away just like it should be for each one of my cameras, whether I'm looking at it in full screen or looking at all four of them at the same time. Now, if I go ahead and open up the ABC7 Outlook on both of them, it opens a little bit more choppy on the tablet, but it's really not too bad. So let's go ahead and check out the motion detection. So if you're not familiar with this, 
it is as simple as going down. It is a plus feature, so you will need to pay the couple bucks for the fully kiosk license. But let's go ahead and enable this. And the detector settings I noticed need to be pretty high. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 95. Uh, the rest you can just go ahead and leave alone. And then in device management is where you can go ahead and set the screen off timer. We'll set it for five seconds in this example. And just for kicks, let's go ahead and, oh, we need some, some permissions to, to do that. So let's go ahead and enable these permissions. And let's go ahead and do the same thing over on the phone, just so we have a good comparison. All right, so motion detection is set up on both devices. I'm just going to wave my hand slowly across both devices at the same time and see how fast it takes to respond. All right, so the phone responded first. It's got a much better camera and it's a little bit snappier. So uh, it responded about half a second before the tablet and turn the screen off about the same. So it's got about the same screen off time. Try that again. Same situation. Phone was a little bit quicker there. Let's try it one more time. I'll go from this way. All right, so about a half a second difference there. So now that we've gone over the specs of the device and what you can expect from it, I actually kind of recommend it. Hard to recommend for a higher end home, but for anyone on a budget, I think this is definitely worth trying for your use case. Uh, I hope I represented enough so you can take your own opinion from this and you can go ahead and make that decision for yourself. But I think I will be using it in my home uh, as a secondary panel, probably not for the main display in my home because the one in the hallway is what we use the most and I want that quick responsiveness and I also want it to look as good as it can be as far as the resolution. Or maybe I can have all four of my cameras here displayed or something like that where I don't really need super high resolution, I just want some information with a big screen. So if you do want to pick one of these tablets up, I'll have the link for Banggood down in the description below as well as some information for action tiles as well as other videos that I've done in regards to action tiles and a link to the website where you can go ahead and sign up for a free trial and check it out for yourself if you haven't yet. Thanks again to action tiles for sponsoring this video. That's all I have for this one and I will see you guys in the next video.